Well, everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm James, continuing on with this Balsa USA smoothie build. It's coming along, it's getting closer to finishing. And in this video, I'm going to be installing the fuel tank. Well, as you can see here, I've already assembled the fuel tank. And what I'm gonna do is I'll post the, the number in this video series, and I'll put a link at the end of the video. If you're interested, you can check out just the, the assembly of the tank. So one thing I wanted to point out as I've done before is that I like to put a little, a little sketch or a diagram on my tank especially when I'm in the process of building because it helps me keep track of what the different lines are for. So as you can see here, I marked um, the top one as V for my vent. This, this side one over here, I marked with a C for the car that's going to connect to the carburetor. And then the F is just basically the line that I'm going to use to fuel the engine up with. So I find that helpful. Sometimes I'll just get a Sharpie and I'll even just mark it when I get done building. I'll just mark it on the, on the fuel tank with using a Sharpie. And that's just helpful kind of when I'm out in the field and things and something I have to remove something or change something. It just helps me keep track of where things are. So that's anything, that's something I like to do. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and pull this off of here. And of course the fuel tank is gonna go in this compartment right back in here. And I realized that I have to put the fuel tank in now before I put the servos in because it's kind of a tight fit. And, I, and if I put the servos in, I think I, I may, it's possible that I wouldn't be able to get the tank out very easily because I think the servos would be in the way. Now one thing I'm going to do is obviously the tank is kind of flops around in there and I'm going to have the, the the throttle linkage for the carburetor is on this side of the plane and it's going to be down inside the fuselage like down in here you know somewhere like somewhere like that inside here and what I want to do is I want to keep the fuel tank pushed over to this side of the fuselage. And so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use this material here. So this is just extruded foam insulation material. And let me grab this. This is not an advertisement for it, but I just wanted to show you what I use. And yeah, so this is it. This is just foamular. I I, I get this at my local hardware store. It's just insulation foam. And again, it's extruded foam material. This is a one inch by two foot square panel. And I think it was around $5 or something. Move that out of the way. It's very light and it's also very strong. So I'll cut pieces of this material up when I'm assembling and putting things inside the fuselage. Sometimes I can use this to cut a little tray for like the battery or I'll wedge it in and kind of protect, help protect the, um, the the receiver and things like that. So I'm just going to use a small piece and I'll cut it later. I'm just going to use a small piece to kind of just wedge in here and just to kind of keep the keep the fuel tank kind of pressed up, oops, pressed up against that side the side of the fuselage in there. And sometimes I glue it in, sometimes I don't. So I'll, you know, I'll just use that like as I mentioned. So let me put this back here. Let me pull this out of here. Okay, so as you can see, obviously the engine is inverted and I'm going to be using, this is just Dubro silicone, silicone fuel tubing for glow fuel. And I'm just going to cut some different lengths of it and we'll just hook up the engine. And one thing I wanted to point out here, again, I'm going to flip this over. No matter how I try, it always seems like I just don't have enough room to do everything that I want to do. This goes like right there. And what you can see here is the fitting coming off of the muffler, I noticed was pretty much goes straight into, or pointed straight at the side of the fuselage here. And I was looking at it the other day and I thought, hmm, maybe I can just take the, the, this, the, the fuel line and kind of bring it up and around the bottom of the fuselage here. But that kind of kinked it a little bit. So what I did is I just drilled a little hole. Hopefully you can kind of see in there right inside here I'm trying to point to it there it is and i'm going to feed the fuel line through there or the vent line i should say i'm just going to feed it through that little hole and that'll keep a in that way it'll be to sort of a, a better like a straighter path to the to the tank without any kinks in it so okay I'll flip this back over all right so again to get started i'm going to just put the tank in here for now like this and I'll just start and do each one of these. So I have one of these. This is a fuel dot. This is for fueling up your, 
your tank. You can see, there's all kinds of different ones of these. You can find these online, and there's a, there's a variety of them, like I said. And what they're for is if you haven't used one of these, is you can drill a hole in your fuselage somewhere, and then you can take this thing apart here. This is just an example. Right. Drill a hole in the fuselage. You can stick this in and then secure it with this with this nut, this kind of retaining nut that they give you. And that'll that'll hold it in here like this. And then it has this little this little sort of like fueling dot which actually kind of screws into here like this. So what would happen is you would that you basically use this, you'd put it on the end of your silicon tubing like that, the silicone tubing. And then this would go, this is assembled, this is inside the, the fuselage now. And then you can just kind of screw it in. And that's how you access the the tank in order to fill it up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to do that. I was just showing you this example of kind of like what you can do. And obviously if you're familiar with this, you know what I'm talking about. But I'm going to go I'm just going to go ahead and use the actual the end of it without assembling or installing this on the fuselage. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I can't see the, the tank anyhow. I have to pull this off in order to see the tank. So I like to use, I'll use something like this, which I mount into the, into the fuselage. Usually if I can see the tank, then it, then it makes it a little bit easier. I can just pull this out and, and fill it up. But if I have to take this, if I have to take the hatch off to see the tank, a lot of times I like to just go ahead and use a, a simple line like this and just to use the plug. So this will just be in here. I'm going to pull this out on my filling line, which is right here, like this. And again, that'll be in here. And I'll probably, it's going to go up against the, this little bulkhead in here. So I was thinking I'm just going to go ahead and bring it through. In this case, I'm going to bring it through the firewall here. Let me get my tweezers, pull it through here. I always feel like a surgeon when I'm doing this. And I'm just going to use it like this. And I, I'll probably cut this maybe to a different length. I'm going to see how it works out. And then what I'll do is I'll just have it and I'll just kind of tuck it in kind of behind the engine or something like this after I, fuel, after I get finished fueling the plane up. And then I obviously I put this back on and I can pull this out and fill the tank up like that. So we can go ahead and leave that like that for now. And let me see here. Let me grab my tubing. And I'm just going to go ahead and estimate how much length I need. And what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and I'll just do the, I'll do the muffler next. So I'm going to need about probably a couple ways to do it. I can cut this. I don't want to waste my tubing. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and I'll hook it onto the vent right now like that I'll feed it through get it under here again tweezers are good for this there we go pull that through like that and I'm going to flip this over like this there you go and then I just need it just need to be able to come in and attach to the the muffler. And I don't want to I want to make sure I don't have any kinks in it. You know, I don't want it to be too tight. And so I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a little bit of play. And I'll put it right about right about there. Maybe a little bit on the long side, but I can always trim it later, but let me start with this. Let's cut this off of here. And I'll feed it through. I think this is going to be a little cumbersome to get this through here. Use tweezers again. And I want to be careful not to kind of damage damage the tubing as I as I pull it through or I use it. I want to make sure I don't. You know, these are tools are kind of sharp. I don't want to put a little hole in it by accident and then have a problems later when I'm trying to run the engine. But this one definitely is a little bit tricky in here. I'm going to have to work with this a little bit to get it on there. There it goes. 
Okay, something like that. I don't usually like to use kind of this type of thing to, to get it on there, but I have to in this case because it's such a tight fit. So I do want to check it and make sure I don't don't cut that tubing by accident. But okay, so there's the there's the connection to the muffler. Okay, so there's the, the vent hooked up. And now we'll go ahead and use the same long piece and we'll connect it to the carburetor now. Okay, so it's connected there. And as you can see, hopefully you can kind of see all those connections. It's not rocket science. And I'll bring this down through here. All right, pull it through. Flip her over again. Okay, like that. And I'm going to have to use my tweezers again. Alright, so I'm going to have this piece of foam that I cut previously, and I'm just going to jam it in here for right now. Tank on this side. Okay, so there's that piece right there, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a small piece just to wedge in along this side right here. And I'm going to cut it, it's already, this block's already kind of got some angles in it. But I'm going to cut it sort of like a wedge, and I'm just going to try to just press it, press it in there. I'll go right about there. Something like that. Cut a little off of this side. And like I said, sometimes I glue it in, sometimes I don't when I'm doing this type of stuff. But here we go, kind of just push this in here. Kind of like that right there. You can kind of see that. And that should kind of hold that nice and secure in there. Okay, well, you know what? Upon further thinking, I decided I am going to use this fuel dot assembly. There's no place else to put the battery. It's got to go here. This is where, the, where it's going to be for the balancing. So it's going to have to go up in this compartment. And I don't want to get this fuel tubing kind of on top of it and kind of mess with it that way. So now what I'm going to do is go back on what I said. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and install this little fuel dot assembly back in here. We'll drill a hole through here and then we'll just feed this through. Now I'll just use a little pilot drill to get me, I'll start it here and I'll see where I end up and make sure everything's clear before I go with the bigger one I'm going to trim this monocoat off of here a little bit before I drill again I don't want to tear it up Okay. All right, that was a five sixteenth, and this is still 
a little bit. I measure this and it looks like it was a little bit smaller than 3 8 but it looks like maybe I need to drill a 3 8 hole. So let me grab my 3 8 bit. Okay, now again, I don't know what brand this is for this little fuel dot assembly. And if you look online, you'll see these, there's, there, there's different types. But yeah, I don't know what brand this was. It was relatively cheap, but just check it out if you're interested. You'll, you'll find a lot of options for these things. So now what I wanna do is I need to put this retaining nut on this side. Screw it in from the outside. That was actually easy enough. I'm going to put some Loctite on this. This definitely will be helpful. I apologize. I know you weren't able to really see what I was doing in there, but hopefully I can kind of show you. So here's the outside. Obviously I screwed that in from the outside and I just kind of held my finger on that little retaining nut and I put that Loctite on there. And I think that should be pretty good. So it's kind of, it's kind of buried back inside there. All right, so now I'll go ahead and feed this through again. Oops, grab this guy. Hopefully this tube is long enough. I may have to replace it now that I'm going out here. Oh, that's pretty good. And then this guy will go on here, obviously. Like that. Let me just push this in. All right, so there's a little fuel dot assembly. And that's going to be helpful now because like I said, it's going to keep the that filling tube out of the way. Right, so there we go. The fuel tank is now installed, and you know I may, like, like always, I may have to make some adjustments as I move forward with some other steps. But I think it's pretty good for now. And of course, there's our little fuel dot on that side. And yeah, so it looks like that's finished. And this will just pop on here now, like that. So that's it for the fuel tank. And what I wanted to mention is that that was sort of a, a I thought it was gonna be kind of a quick video and it, and it was and it is, but I kind of stumbled around with this. So I apologize for some, some of the awkwardness in me assembling this with going back and forth using the fuel dot and such. But you know, that's kind of what happens at least when I, when I build. I don't do everything exactly as planned sometimes. All right, so the next step on this is gonna to be to install the control rods. Um, for the for the throttle, for the elevator and rudder, and for the ailerons, and then after that, of course, you're going to put the put the electronics in. And yeah, this thing's getting pretty darn close. Okay, so thanks for watching my channel. I appreciate it like always, and we'll see you next time. <music>